Hello, everybody. My name is Mark. I am the stock market jobber. Um, I have a lot of experience trading. So at this point in my career, I decided I want to teach people. I got brought into the industry by the great Mario Gabelli. Then I worked for the great Steve Cohen. So I traded directly for each of them. After that, I was uh, the head of trading at three different institutional money managers where I oversaw various strategies. And yes, there was hedge funds. I don't know why people are so fascinated with hedge funds, but <clears throat> the only difference between a hedge fund and a regular fund is the, the payment structure, the fee structure. But you can check out my site, Stock Market Job, and learn more about that. So please subscribe to our YouTube page here. And I want to talk about Bed Bath & Beyond. And I want to tell you, as someone with two decades of institutional trading experience, that the markets are not rigged, hedge funds are not evil, and market makers don't go to work trying to rip off the little guy every day. That's just not how it works in the real world. People that blame hedge funds or market makers when they lose money are the people that are never going to be successful. All right. If you make a mistake, you're wrong. It's not because some trader out there is just saying like, oh, let me rip off the little guy. If you actually want to be successful, you got to be introspective and ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? All right. The markets are not re rigged. Repeat, the markets are not rigged. If they were, I would know. Uh, you know, I was actually there. So anyway, Bed Bath & Beyond is on the move today. So I figured I would just talk about it because there's a good lesson to be learned here. It's trading is really a lot about knowing where there are important price levels. Now, we're a little bit off this. We're down to 288. But see how Bed Bath & Beyond over the last two weeks or so ran into resistance at 450. Well, why is there resistance at 450? There's resistance here because it was a support level. And this is due to buyer's remorse. There's people who bought here who once the price went lower regret doing so and they tell themselves they want to get out, but they only, they're only going to do it if they can do it without losing money. So they place their sell orders at the same level they had their buy orders at. Now, why is this important? Well, if you buy something and it starts to rally, you can look back into the past and say, oh, gee, that was a support level. There's a good chance there's going to be resistance there. That's where I'm going to have my target. Now, if you think back to uh, August, okay, back here, there was all this talk that Ryan Cohen, who was the activist investor, bought, you know, these calls that had strike prices of like $80 and the market makers were going to have to go out and do this gamma hedge and buy all the stock and they were going to drive the price up to $80. And let me tell you something. If everyone is on the same side of a trade, if everyone that you talk to in your chat rooms or on Reddit or whatever is saying the same thing, well, it's not going to act that way because once people are on the same side of the trade, there's no one else left to push it any higher. All right. And it also begs the question too, like why wouldn't the market maker just use a different option to hedge themselves? They don't need to go out and buy the shares. So that was a complete myth. All right. Now, what would have made it a lot easier than trying to figure out what a gamma squeeze is or or what a Vega squeeze is or whatever the hell they were talking about? Well, levels that were resistance tend to stay intact for a while, just like support can turn into resistance. Resistance can stay intact for a while. Where did despite all this mythology and all this stuff that was going on, where did Bed Bath and Beyond find resistance at the same level that it did in July of 21? The same level as here in 22, right? This is called market memory. Technical analysis and trading does not need to be complicated. People overcomplicate it. I think Wall Street is has people that want to make things seem complicated so they can charge fees. There's also just a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about, giving out advice. At stockmarketjobber.com, we focus on levels, trends, momentum, and investment psychology. And if you do that, you can learn how to make money in the market. I am 100% confident. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Make sure you check in every day. Let us know if you want to, or please subscribe if you want push notifications and so forth. Um, fairly soon, we're going to start giving out trade recommendations a few times a week. Um, that's it. Thanks, everybody. I will talk to you soon.